Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith. In this video, I'm continuing my discussion of the Arctic. The Arctic temperature anomalies, so temp the, the, the warming of the Arctic is much, much higher than, than, than what is normal. And the, the sea ice and the snow cover is suffering tremendously. So I'm showing the plots and graphs that are the, the best depictions of, of what is actually happening. So I want to reiterate what I was talking about in the uh, previous uh, video. Okay, so everybody's focusing on what's happening in September, the September minimum. You know, what after the melt season throughout the summer, how much ice is left? What's the minimum amount of ice? And this is the volume, and you can see the black curve showing the fluctuation from year to year and the and, and an exponential fit to it, you know, and the big question is when will it vanish for the first time? Um, you know, some September in the next few years, we're going to have no Arctic sea ice. But the big question is, which people aren't discussing, is what happens next? What happens after that? So that black line for September is the green line on this plot. The other curves are all of the different months. So we've got the purple line here is October, and we've got the August line is this uh, pinkish purple line here. So it's a toss up as to which month will vanish first, which, which of these, but after this goes through zero, the feedbacks kick in, it draws these down through zero, probably within a few years. And then next we have November is going to vanish and July completely vanish. Okay, and then after that we have May vanishing. Okay, and then we have January vanishing, June vanishing. Okay, and uh, it, and it goes on. You can just track the colors and you can, you know, if the order is maintained from here, you can see when the different months will disappear or, or the, the order and then the timing from this first event to this, I'm estimating uh, within a decade. The feedbacks will pull these things down sooner than we would expect. And I talked in more detail about this in the previous video. So what I was showing here is I showed the great plots from Zach Leib showing the sea ice extent, the air temperature in the Arctic, sea ice extent tracking down, sea ice, land ice, right? The, the configuration in the Arctic of what the ice that's left and so on. Okay, many, many excellent plots. Um, the data is all there. Now, the Great White Con is another good site, and you can access that by clicking here, Great White Con Resources, just Google Arctic Sea Ice Graphs, and I'm focusing on these links. And there's, you can see what's happening on the Arctic webcams, for example. So this is Alaska. This is what used to be Barrow, Alaska. This is from April 6, 2019. Okay, so you can see the ice here, the different webcams, um, different places in the Arctic, it's all there. Um, the, the Arctic sea ice graphs, you can see a summary of all these different plots. Here's the sea ice area, sea ice extent, see, you know, and it's using data from some of the other sites. Um, PO, mass, PO mass volume April and so on. Okay, lots of good data here. Um, and there's also um, regional graphs. So, for example, if you want to see what's happening near Svalbard, okay, there's images of the ice, there's a sea ice concentration, and uh, the Greenland area, sea ice area around Greenland, etc. There's loads and loads of ways of looking at this data, and they're all showing basically the same thing. Now back to Arctic sea ice graphs. If you go to the very bottom, there's a map here of the Arctic. So I'll just remind you here. So, so let's have a look at what's gonna happen. Okay, so right now, if this is the Arctic sea ice extent 
here, depicted here, the center of the um, cold area would be right here. If you, if you think of this as a circle, center of the circle is going to be right up there somewhere. Now, what happens when there's, when all this sea ice is gone? Blue ocean event, no sea ice, okay? Where's the uh, center of cold going to be? Well, the only ice is, will be on Greenland, right? So the center of cold will be somewhere in central Greenland here. This is 70 degrees latitude north. So about 73 degrees latitude north will be the center, is the center of Greenland. That'll be the center of cold. So the center of cold will basically shift from somewhere around the North Pole down to the center of Greenland. Right now, the jet streams circulate around the center of cold. When there's no sea ice, you could see the jet streams centered around this. And that means the cold is going to be shifted a lot further south over North America. Guess what happened in North America this winter? We had a global warming hole, very cold region persistently over most of the winter over North America. It meant that there was a lot of snow cover and that snow has been melting combined with a so-called bomb cyclone where the pressure at the center of the cyclone dropped by a millibar for 24 per hour for at least 24 hours defining it according to meteorologists as a bomb cyclone and it dumped huge amounts of snow and then there was rapid melt after and we've had record flooding in the midwest of the u.s noaa says recently that that can continue for april and may if it does so not only were, were vast amounts of stored grains um, destroyed by the flooding some of the grains stored in elevators that got wet of course it expands and it ex basically exploded the elevators just pushed the walls out causing them to collapse there there was a lot more grain in storage in that region um, this winter because the price was depressed because of the tariffs in this trade war with china so let much less was exported to China. Farmers wouldn't sell it at a loss, so they stored a lot more of it. And about a third of it, I believe, has been destroyed. Also, if the fields are saturated with water and pollutants that were carried by the floodwaters, then farmers won't be able to plant. We could see food price spikes, you know, later on uh, this, this year as it works through the system. The other thing that happens is with no Arctic sea ice, so not only does the centroid of cold move down over to Greenland, but because the Arctic is so much warmer than it is now, the temperature gradient to the equator is much, much smaller. So the jet streams become even wavier and even slower, maybe even completely breaking up. So what would guide weather patterns in that case? The main factor would be the temperature difference between the oceans and the land. Because of the high heat capacity, the thermal heat capacity of water versus air and land and soil and everything else, the, the land will always heat up and cool down as the season changes much, much faster than the oceans. When the land is much, much colder, in the oceans, then the hot air is rising over the oceans, creating a low pressure area. So the winds will blow from the land onto the ocean. And it'll be very, very dry conditions on the land, even on coastlines. Okay, when the, when in the summer, when the land heats up much warm, much faster than the oceans, the land being much, much warmer than the oceans, hot air rises, creates a low pressure over the land, sucks in air from over the ocean. That air, because over the ocean, will have a lot of water vapor content. So it goes over the land, it rises lots and lots of, of, of uh, rainfall over the land. In, in fact, torrential rainfall. What we're describing here is a monsoon situation, and that will become the prevailing mode for our, our uh, climate. 
you know, without jet streams providing the guidance and stability, you know, climate stability, you know, what we're used to without jet streams or with severely weakened jet streams, we're going to be transitioning to a much warmer world with much more water vapor in the atmosphere, but also one with much more, um, the, the weather will be much, much more dependent on land ocean contrast. So we'll go to basically to like a monsoonal type uh, situation. Now, another thing is that people, you know, talk all about the sea ice decline, but, and, and that's having a huge effect on the albedo or reflectance of the Arctic. The Arctic is becoming a much darker place. In fact, in the last three decades or so, according to Ceres um, satellite data, the reflectivity, average reflectivity of the Arctic region was 52% um, number of decades ago, and now it's only 48%. So it's a much darker place. Now, of course, the loss of sea ice has a huge impact on that, but equally huge is the snow cover. And people don't talk too much about the snow cover on the land. So if you Google climate, if you Google Rutgers snow cover, this they have a global snow lab here. And this is showing snow cover extent across the Northern Hemisphere, average um, snow cover extent for the lot for March. Okay, and there's you can look at it in terms of daily, weekly, monthly. So let's look at monthly, for example. This is March snow cover. Okay, the percentage here and you can cycle through per month and so on. But what I do want to look at really is um, look at the graphs of the snow anomalies, monthly anomalies, if you like. Okay, so this is 1967 to 2019, for example, in March, Northern Hemisphere snow cover anomaly. We could go to April and it's 2018, of course, because we're just in April now and you can see that the, basically this is the anomaly, so positive anomalies to negative anomalies here. Um, we can go to, this is May. Okay, so now we're getting a more distinct trend here. You can see there's some scatter, but you know, these are generally above zero. These are going to below zero. And now in May, we're getting a stronger trend downward here. And if we go to June, is the most significant trend. Okay, so look at these. We're this is millions of square kilometers. So in the last number of years, we're like four million square kilometers less land covered by snow in June compared to the 1981 to 2010 average. And then if we go to July, it's reduced. And August, right, the trend is not as strong. So it's really in the months of June is the biggest month here of decline and May is also very strong and then the other months aren't quite as as, as clear cut. So snow cover decline, you know, when we talk about climate restoration and growing sea ice and preserving sea ice so that Greenland doesn't just sit, sit there like a, a sore thumb basically and have massive calving causing massive sea level rise, we can also look at ways of increasing the reflectivity over the land since there's the snow cover is much less, um, just a thought. Um, now, of course, people in North America have experienced a global warming hole, this cold area over lots of North America. It's, it was covering this whole area because the jet streams were coming south. Now it's a bit less pronounced. Um, but the, uh, basically the Antarctic is cold, okay? Minus 1.3 degrees Celsius. Cold there is the anomaly and the Arctic is huge at positive anomaly, plus 5.3, okay? And we have our global warming hole here. Remember what I said about the jet stream center of cold maybe shifting down. And of course, you know, this is what the jet streams are looking like right now over North America, Earth and all school. Anyway, th thank you for listening to these videos.